Welcome to the Brant and Sherry Oddcast, sponsored by America's Christian Credit Union. To order Brant's latest book, Life is Hard, God is Good, Let's Dance, or to find out more about the show, go to BrantHanson.com. Here's a piece of advice I found online, and it's true, and it's terrible advice at the same time. Okay. The advice is, you don't have to forgive anybody you don't want to. That's true. Uh, Yeah, it is. Isn't it? Yes, it is. You don't have to. It's a recipe for not a good life. Oh, yeah, misery. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Forgiveness is the root to freedom. You don't have to take it. You don't have to. Jesus says his way of living is lighter. Mm -hmm. It's easier. It's better. Like, but you don't have to go that direction. Yeah. You have the choice. You can live with unforgiveness for the rest of your life. I want to give you an update on uh, my campaign. Oh, it's been a while. Yes. Yeah. Kind of been stuck in the, <laughs> in the mud. It's just a lot well, of stuff going you, on. Well, I know there is a lot of stuff going on, a lot of noise. It's hard to get traction right I now. I know that you were feeling a little stumped. No I'm, pun uh, intended. Just so you know, I'm running for the Senate in mm-hmm. the year 2038. Maybe that's the problem. It's just a little too far out. I don't think so. Okay. And someone suggested <laughs> that maybe I encourage people because like early voting is a thing. Yes. I mean, I know it's 2038. I don't right. know how far in advance. I don't think that they're issuing ballots for 2038. Now you never know, but I don't think yet. Okay. See, this is the kind of stuff I need to learn. I think, <laughs> this to is why you a... gave yourself some yeah, runway. That's exactly sure. right. <laughs> a lot of us have this weird idea, kind of in the backs of our heads, I think that we're, we're pretty independent. We don't hmm. really need anybody else. And I ran across this before, but I was, I was reminded of it from Steve Jobs. He wrote something down before he died. Hmm. I just thought it was really interesting. He said, I grow little of the food I eat and of the little I do grow, I did not breed or perfect the seeds. I do not make any of my own clothing. I speak a language I did not invent or refine. I did not discover the mathematics I use. I am protected by freedoms and laws I did not conceive of or legislate. I am moved by music I did not create myself. When I needed medical attention, I was helpless to help myself survive. And he goes on. Mm. It's just so true. Like, there's so much to be thankful for. We're not free agents. And there's, there's a, we're way more vulnerable and dependent than we actually think. And I think that's good to review because it makes me remember again just how thankful I am for every, every way I'm provided for through other people, but ultimately from God. Okay, here we go. This is a feature of the show, and can you do the intro? Sure, and now a masterclass on joke telling with your instructor, Brant Hansen. By the way, I can't remember if I used this one before, so if I have, we'll quickly pivot to a backup joke. Okay, Okay. thanks thanks for the heads up, sure. So a man is in an interview, and he's asked, where do you see yourself in five years? He replies, well, I'd say my biggest weakness is listening. (laughs) All right. That's not bad. Thank you. Yeah, okay, that's good. not bad, and I don't remember you doing that. Good. Okay. I don't either. All right. Probably listeners going, you guys have used that four times. You're getting old. <laughs> so there's a website that is called one of the most morbid websites out there. I actually don't think it's morbid. Okay. I'm curious what you would think. It's called See Your Folks. See and, Your Folks. Yeah, like your parents. Okay. And what you do is you enter your data, like what country you live in. Um, and so that dictates life expectancy sort of data. And then how many times a year you visit your parents mm-hmm. and then their age and that sort of stuff and your age. And, uh, and then it gives you a number of roughly how many more times you're going to see your parents. Okay. I don't think that's morbid. I don't either. And if it's, if it, maybe it just reminds people that you're mortal mm-hmm. and they're mortal. Mm-hmm. I think that's good. Yeah. I don't see a problem with this. I think like, appreciating, wait, this doesn't go on. Like, I, I do need to be with him. Hey, I just want to warn you, just to be nice, uh, let you know, I'm a shock jock, so I'm going to shock you. <laughs> Thanks for the heads up. You're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm one of those shock jocks that it's clean. I'm, I shock with just being really like, what? Ah, with true yeah. information. Sure, sure. This shocked me. <laughs> you know, um, Frosted Flakes? Yes. Right? Uh-huh. You know Tony the Tiger? Yes. Do you know he has a wife and kids? <laughs> there is a Mrs. Tiger. Yeah. 
And children. How many? Two kids, uh, Tony Jr. and a daughter, Antoinette. Antoinette. Yeah. Oh, that's sweet. Yeah. Uh, I guess they were used early on in the advertisements, but they just kind of decided they didn't need them anymore. Well, just... well I mean, sometimes you don't want your family involved in I the get work. It. He's the breadwinner. <laughs> So this is a great point from this lady. She's from Switzerland, I think. Elizabeth Kubler, Kubler Ross. She said, people are like stained glass windows. They sparkle and shine when the sun is out. But when the darkness sets in, their true beauty is revealed only if there is light from within. Mm. I like that. It reminds me of, it reminds me a lot of being a city on a hill, being a, a light on a, a lamp stand. Like, so that people can see it when it's dark. Mm -hmm. like, that's when it matters. That's when it matters. Yeah. Just thinking about what Jesus had to say about that. And then I started thinking about Switzerland because she's from Switzerland. And then I remembered the, <laughs> <laughs> I remember the joke about, uh -huh. yeah, it's really expensive there, but their flag is a big plus. Oh, that's quite the leap. I know. From a city on a hill. I know. And a lampstand. But if you have a joke, yeah, you have to say it. I mean, it's hard not to. Really? No, you don't. No, no you don't. Because it's not a it's not a straight line. But, but to get their flag there. is a big plus. <laughs> yep, it's really a brilliant thing. America's Christian Credit Union. We're honored that they sponsor our podcast because uh, I believe in what they do. We believe in them. And um, if you've got loans you need, if you've got uh, even like auto loans, even mm -hmm. like like all sorts of stuff, churches use this for loans to build stuff or whatever. But uh, personal savings. I'll use them for that checking. Um, it's just the fact that what they do is a lot of good yeah. with the money. If you think about it, like if, if they've got a lot of people's savings, that's how banks work. But mm -hmm. their thing is we, they reinvest that. Yeah. And it's a not-for-profit. And again, it's brilliant where they wind up funding adoptions and things like that. So if you're interested in um, banking that way, it's, it's a different kind of thing. America's Christian Credit Union, just go to brandhanson.com. Election season will be over soon enough. Oof. Not soon enough. You know, here's a political story I don't feel like we talk about enough. Okay. The whole William Henry Harrison thing. That's <laughs> too crazy. I'm not aware of it. Okay, imagine if this happened now. Okay. It was cold, right? He was elected president. It was cold for Inauguration Day. Mm -hmm. He gets up there. He's like, I don't need a coat. Okay. I'm a big, tough man. And sure. he spoke for two full hours. <laughs> and it was really cold. <laughs> All right. And he got sick. Mm -hmm. And he died. Oh. Right. No, we don't talk we about don't that. We don't talk about no. this <laughs> Generally speaking, we want people to enjoy life, right? Yes. Okay, good. <laughs> this poll of 3,000 Americans said, are you generally enjoying this election season or do you wish it were over? 21% said they're enjoying it and they wish it went on longer. 21%. Okay. So. Again, <laughs> glad. Right. People enjoy it. Mm hmm. Yeah. What's wrong with you? <laughs> That's my other question. I just, I just want to. You have I, mean, a laser I don't mean that in a negative way. On just that like, 21%. Just, yeah, in all friendliness. <laughs> yes, yeah. What is the matter with you? <laughs> Here's a thing that says parents will have over 2,500 disagreements in the first year of a baby's life. Okay. Does that sound right to you? No. Being okay. No, it doesn't. It sounds way, high or low. Way too high. Way too high. Twenty five hundred. I don't know. I mean, just con I mean, a seven a day. Okay. Disagreements too many. Okay. About the baby. Yeah. Okay. About the baby. <laughs> I don't know. I, I just yeah. I, so I, I I don't know. I just I'll pass along like if you see the headline. Mm -hmm. Don't get too discouraged about. Babies and stuff. Okay. Uh, babies are good. Mm hmm Children are good. It's not a big drag all the time, honest. Some people think they can't really do anything significant unless they get angry about it. And I think that's wrong. Mm hmm And I've also pointed out, I think this is true, there's something really awesome, for lack of a better word, about somebody who gets things done without anger. Yeah. But they get it done. And you probably can get it done better oh, without yeah. the anger. Yes. Yeah. And it's funny, I just saw this list of underrated traits of people who are highly respected. Now, here's some seemingly unrelated, mm -hmm. but if you want to be respected, they let others speak. Mm -hmm. They don't fidget. Mm. They have control over their reactions. Mm -hmm. They actively listen. 
they speak purposefully and slower mm. all those things yeah don't work with anger and they all lead to be more respected that's true like there's, there's something really powerful about somebody who just does what needs done and it's not out of anger i'd like to issue a plea to dental hygienists okay to not be so interesting <laughs> I think you've issued this plea yeah. before. Well, it, they took it up to a new level. They, okay. she, in mm -hmm. this case, mm -hmm. a lady that was cleaning my teeth. But yeah, she, I had told her what I do, and, mm -hmm. and I'm, a, I'm a believer in Jesus. Whatever. Uh -huh. She's asking me. Oh. What about when tragedy hits? Like, oh, what? Man. What do you do? It, but I can't talk because the water and the yeah, and, the, and I'm like, yeah. Well, <laughs> Well, you had real encouragement to give I her. Did. Oh man! And I had to wait. And like, <laughs> it, it had the vacuum in my mouth. Sure. Too. Like, yeah. <laughs> and then well, when it's I done, in John it, chapter it, six, <laughs> verse five. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You know, the lady who was cleaning my teeth. I was just talking about this. She was asking me yesterday about like how bad things can happen in the world if God is good, mm. which is a great question. Yeah. It's totally fair. And when I could talk, it took a little while. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was able to just say, number one, if I don't see an answer for something, that doesn't mean that answer doesn't exist. Mm. My brain is not all exhaustive or even close. Mm -hmm. It might be that some things are bigger than I can understand the backstory. The other thing is, I told her for me, and we've mentioned this on the air before, but I want to I wanna say it again. Even though I don't have all the answers for everything, I trust the character of God. Mm. I have learned that. There's been various ways I've learned it, that he's actually good. Don't have all the answers, don't know everything. I understand their suffering, but overall, I can tell you I trust him. And that means when I don't have the answer, I, I still think he's got one. Something I can't really talk about on the air because it's too heavy, uh, but, uh, Humans are worshiping machines, right? I mean, we know this. Mm -hmm. We're made to worship someone, something. That's how the human soul works. Mm -hmm. We have to have something we worship. If we don't worship a rock steady God of peace, we will make an idol out of something else. That's very true. And we will make it our identity. Our identity rests on that thing. Mm -hmm. For millions of people in our country, that idol is politics yes millions of people then are about to watch that thing crumble in front of their eyes true and there's going to be a mental health crisis beyond anything we've ever seen that's that's my prediction for um when i we keep talking about how things are going to get weirder mm -hmm. that's an aspect of that very true because it yeah so identities are wrapped up in it mm -hmm. and that means we can't handle it so not gonna be us, not gonna be me. Um, hopefully not you as you're listening, not Sherry, mm. but uh, it's gonna be an awful lot of people. Being pursued is kind of a nightmare. It's sometimes like you have a nightmare about being chased by something. Uh. But you know what's really interesting? In Psalm uh, 23, it ends with, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Mm. I just learned that the word there that they translate follow me means to be relentlessly pursued. Well, I like that actually. Yeah. Yeah. God's coming after you with his goodness and mercy. I love that. For the rest of your life. And he's going to secure you. Like it's like the lost sheep pursuing with goodness and mercy. So you are being pursued, but it's really good news. The Brant and Sherry Oddcast, sponsored by America's Christian Credit Union. To find out more about the show, go to BrantHanson.com.